Spatulas? No. Cake, cake serving thing. <laughs> this thing that you serve cake with. Good morning everyone, I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop and welcome to Friday morning. It's Friday morning for me at about 10 a.m. or so and um, I've had a nice week. I actually was able to have my first dose of the, uh, of the vaccination and so uh, both of my uh, parents have been fully vaccinated and of course I have to wait, you know, four weeks or so before the, the second dose. And uh, so I'm so thankful for that. And I know many of you are also uh, have the opportunity to be vaccinated and you're probably feeling excited <laughs> about gaining uh, some normalcy back to your, to your life. And so I'm happy for all of us. And of course we continue to be cautious and, and um, make the best choices as we venture out there. Excuse me, as we venture out and uh, my goodness, did old man wind come last night and blew through here. And uh, it is howling like crazy today. I could hear it all night long. This building is 120 years old and I'm on the top floor and I don't have uh, large buildings right in front of my windows to sort of break that howling wind that comes through here and man was it rattling my window panes and it still is all i really have to do is watch will uh on will's thrifting ventures he's in ohio i think um and his is it latitude or longitude i haven't studied geography in a long time anyway lateral right i think he's almost uh, on an even line except I don't know 600 miles in that maybe 500 miles in that direction anyway it seems like whatever weather is in his video I get it the next day so thank you will for cooking all of that wonderful stuff you didn't send me any of that pot roast the other day but you sent me this wind I'm just kidding just kidding I can't compete with his cooking videos yesterday what did I do peel an orange and slice a pear well, anyway, that's not what you tuned in for to hear me ramble on. Okay, I'm going to make a correction on something that I said so that I don't give out any misleading information. Then I'm going to show you a couple of things that I'm going to be getting ready for the old curiosity shop. I've got packages to take down to my 9th Street post office which means I'm gonna drive down there because I've got a lot of packages. And I think today I'll drive up the 9th Street Market. Today is not market day, which is a good thing because it won't be crowded. And I'll get, give you a chance to see a little bit of uh, the way many Philadelphians in South Philadelphia still shop and it hasn't changed in 150 some years. So I'll show you that. But first I wanna make a, a, a uh, correction to something that I said a couple of days ago when I was holding this up and I said maybe it's Fenton maybe it's Pilgrim glass a subscriber correctly reminded me that most of the pontals on the Pilgrim glass are not polished and she was right she he is or he is correct they're they're not and you do sometimes see a little pebbly uh, remnants of a Pontal, which is where the blown glass is broken off of the pipe. Many companies will grind that down and polish it so that it's completely smooth. And we can see this one is smooth on the bottom. It's been polished. Uh, I will say though that sometimes Cranber uh, Pilgrim glass may appear to have a polished pontal because sometimes they actually stamped into the hot glass, uh, the letter P on some of their glass, you'll see that. 
Sometimes it's actually uh, sort of etched pilgrim glass, in, which almost is like a frosted etching in the bottom. And other times you'll just see a sticker. Uh, and it's also true, now that I think about it, is I don't, I really don't see too many ruffled edges on pilgrim glass pieces, not to say that there aren't any. So uh, I have not listed this yet, but I've got the photographs of it and I'm going to be listing it hopefully today. Uh, so tune back in over the weekend, Friday and Saturday, and hopefully we'll have more of this beautiful glass up for sale. So I want to thank that subscriber for uh, correcting me and making sure that Listen, I try to make sure that I don't give out erroneous information, and, and if I do, it should be corrected. What am I going to do now? I'm going to do this now, and then I'm going to show you some of the other things for sale. This was yesterday's Wow. What's up with that? Now, many of you chimed in mm -hmm, and, uh, and said, well, it's Viking glass. Okay. Okay but there's more to it than that. So I'm still not gonna tell you. I want you to dig a little bit deeper. It's a mystery. Uh, that's all I'll say, yes. It's probably Viking glass, but, aha, there's something a little more to this piece. I will give you a clue. Uh, well, I'll just tell you. Yes, I've seen it with the Viking label on it. In fact, a, a, uh, an antique colleague, friend of mine in the business, uh, uh, Carl, I was out at his, uh, where he sells a couple weekends ago, and we were looking at a piece of, of, we were looking at this with the Viking label still on it and the flower frog that goes on top. So I know you'll see this with a Viking label on it. Okay, but <clears throat> it was just eating at me, you know, and I thought, is there some, I have seen that thing before and it's going to bug me until I can get to the bottom of it. So a clue for you is I went back into my two volumes, one I had and the other one was ripped to shreds and a lovely subscriber sent me a better copy of it. The Great American Glass of the Roaring Twenties, <clears throat> is that what it says? And the Depression Era. There's Volume 2 and there's Volume 1. Um, and let's see, ooh, let's forget Volume 2 for a minute. I want you to look at the cover of Volume 1. I'm going to zoom in. You can't see very well because it's very light in color, but do you see that thing right there with a the lid? I know it's not, I'm trying to get it to focus a little bit better for you. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, anyway, I promise you <laughs> it, in the next video or two, I will come back and spill the beans. One of the most fascinating things about this business, passion, hobby, is the minute you think you know something, you find out you don't know anything. There are so many exceptions to rules and variations. Uh, it's very difficult to say specifically to figure out who made what. And remember, there was so much competition in those glass factories. And so many of them were all clustered together in that Eastern, I'm sorry, Western Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Ohio area, and molds were traded and families intermarried and designers and glass blowers went from one company to the next and they traded secrets and there was a lot of mixing going on in there. So there's a clue. There's a little bit more to that piece than just Viking. So we'll come back to that, but it's exciting and I want to, I, I'm enjoying it and I'm, I thank you everyone who puts in your guesses and, and, um, and puts your thoughts in there. It makes it fun for all of us, I hope. Well, let me have a sip of this. Ooh, and the pieces that are coming up uh, for sale, I have decided to go ahead and sell 
the Anchor Hawking Vitrock Green Vase. All right, so, and I'm not gonna ramble on because we've talked about that, but that's gonna be in the shop in a few days. This is probably a dresser piece. It did not have a lid. Again, remember the hair receivers almost always have that, the, the lid on the top. This is probably just for trinkets. Mm-hmm, false eyelashes, false eyeballs, that kind of thing. You know, whatever the lady takes off at night and drops in there. She could even put a powder in there, but we can clearly see it never had a lid. It's just a pretty dresser piece in porcelain, completely unmarked. There's a little bit of sticky label on the bottom I have to get off. All right, so that's coming up in the shop. Very popular in the 1930s and 40s were, were, were these uh, cakes, cake serving spatulas, no, cake, cake serving thing, but this thing that you serve cake with, scoop, and they, the plates would match, in other words, there would be a pie plate or a cake plate that would have this same pattern, pattern on there, and it's crazed as you can see, that's depression era, uh, and all the American dinnerware companies made these. What else is down here on the floor? If you could see the floor. I can't even see the rug. Um, oh, I have not, I'm still here. I have not uh, looked up this pattern yet because as you know, when I dip into the 60s and 70s, I don't, that's really out of my league, and I'm not a Pyrex expert at all, so I don't recognize that pattern. They look like puffy little milkweeds to me. I have to look it up, but it's a divided uh, di baking dish there. Mm-hmm. Put your sauerkraut on one side and your beanie weenies on the other. I don't know that pattern. Uh, anybody know it? If you, if you do, you know, tell me. That'll save me. I don't have a, I don't have a Pyrex book, and it'll save me looking it up uh, and it's in excellent condition until I drop it on the floor. Now we're gonna go out into the kitchen because I'm gonna show you five or six pieces of green uranium glass that I'm also selling in the old curiosity shop. So let's go do that and we can take a look at it under the black light and then we'll get in the car, drive down to the post office. I'll let you have a sneak, a little peek at the old Italian market, which is really known today as the Ninth Street Market uh, in South Philadelphia. And uh, that's probably going to wrap this video up for the day. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead right now, even though I'll splice this in at the end. Uh, I am down, deep down in the heart of South Philadelphia, and uh, I'm about to go to the post office on 9th Street, and then, I'm sorry, on, um, the, on Dickinson Street, but then I'm going to turn on 9th and drive up through the Italian market. Now, old timers still call it the Italian market. But for the most part now in Philly, it's referred to as the 9th Street Market, as still a lot of Italians and a huge Italian influence around here, but their, their demographics change and there's an influx of 
immigrants from all over the world. So South Philly is a very multicultural area. The market is pretty much like it was a hundred years ago. And it's a way a lot of city folks shop every day. I come to the, to the market not terribly often because I have Chinatown right next to me and I can do all kinds of produce and meat and fish shopping right there. Okay, so we today is not market day. So I would not be driving down 9th Street on market day uh, filming because it's so you wouldn't be able to see anything. Now there should be some vendors. There are always some vendors, a few fruit sellers, some of the fish monger, mongers, mongrels, fish monger, fish, fish, <laughs> something with an M. <laughs> they, they will be there and uh, you'll get to see when the market when it's not crowded. Okay, let's drop these packages off at the post office first and then a very slow drive up the Italian market. I also had somebody tell me I could never live in the city because I miss, I would miss trees. We have trees in the city. We got a lot of trees. Anyway. Oh no. Okay, here's my post office. And, ah, uh, where am I gonna park? This is not good. All right, there's Pat's steaks. I told you somebody would be eating a cheese steak at 10.30 in the morning. Oh, you're letting me go. Okay, I get to go. All right, that's Pat's. I guess I'm going a little too fast. 19.30, I forget what it says. And then right across the street is Gino, Gino's. This is Pashyunk Avenue we're going over here. That, um, this place, especially, uh, well, the later the day gets, it's mobbed down here. You, you can't even, it's just shoulder to shoulder and the lines go all around the block. All right, now, I don't know how I'm going to get around this, but this is the 9th Street Market. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure what he's gonna do. If you happen to have seen the movie Philadelphia with Tom Hanks, which came out back in the very early 90s, uh, you saw some clips of the Italian market. I, I think in the opening scene they did a little filming down here. I'm waiting for someone in front of me to parallel park. Now, as I said, this is not the big market day, so the, you see almost no one here, and it is early morning, relatively, before lunch anyway. But on market day, shoulder to shoulder, and you can find everything, every kind of fruit and vegetable and fish and meat and pasta and baked goods. It's all here for you to, uh, to buy and take back to your little row house. And the languages that you'll hear spoken, Italian and uh, Indonesian and uh, Polish, oh my goodness, everything.
okay, we just watched the whole thing. There it is. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thank you for watching. Have yourselves a wonderful weekend, a safe weekend, and uh, maybe I'll see you Saturday or Sunday. And if not, we'll see you Monday. So long for now, everyone. Mm, that wind is going to blow me into the Atlantic Ocean. It's a good thing I can swim.